Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. This lesson is part of an extended discussion on identifying potential root causes for eventually building a data collection plan, or DCP. In this lesson, I'll build on the previous lessons about the CNE diagram and five whys concept and how they can be combined for finding potential root causes faster when trying to build the DCP. So it's essential that you at least review the previous lessons that first introduced you to the DCP, the CNE diagram, and the five whys concept. But for now, let's quickly review again how the CNE diagram and five whys concept fit into this discussion on identifying root causes. Remember what we're trying to do here is to build the transfer function. That's the y equals f of x. In order to do that, we have to begin with trying to build the data collection plan or the DCP. So we should already know what the project y is. So now we need to find out what are those potential x's for that transfer function. And it's the data collection plan is going to help us ensure that we have enough data for measuring that y and every one of those x's within the transfer function. So what we're going to review again is the overall method for how we might build the DCP. And started off with, as an input to our meeting with the team, it's going to begin with making sure we have the defined phase items, which would also include the Y and the defect definitions. All those things that we should have up to this point, make sure we have those already defined before the meeting even begins. And then for the meeting itself, the process that will actually follow during the meeting is going to begin with this next step, which is validating the Y and the defect definition with the team to make sure they agree with it. And next we want to identify what are all the potential X's that the team believes are the X's that could be part of the transfer function. Well we might use several tools again like the cause and effect diagram which is also the fishbone and Ishikawa diagram and also the five Y's tool. Once we've identified the potential X's then we move on to the next step which was narrowing down those potential X's to what we consider to be the most critical X's. This is where we might use the cause and effect matrix or the CNE matrix to figure that out. Then the last part here is an output from the meeting. What we're going to do is our last step is to build the data collection plan, that DCP for those critical X's we identified. And this is where we're going to use something like the sample size calculator, as well as consideration for the short and long-term data and the data collection plan in order to, to build this final data collection plan from this process. Okay, now let's talk about how we can combine the CD diagram and five Y's into a single step for identifying all potential root causes. Well, I believe that we can save a lot of time by building the CNE diagram and the five Y's together in order to identify all the potential root causes. So rather than building just the CNE diagram in the traditional fishbone format, the suggestion I would offer is that you follow some of these next few steps in order to show how you can do them together with the five Y's tool. So first of all, like in a spreadsheet or something like that, you want to lay out all those same different bone labels as different column labels, again, such as in a spreadsheet. So it's the same type of labels that you might use in a fishbone diagram, like the six M's that we've shown in the previous lesson, like manpower, machine, method, and so on. And you can do that, or you can do that on a dry erase board or flip chart or something like that. But I find it helpful, actually, to do it within a spreadsheet that I'm, de that I'm displaying to the team as we review this. So here's an example of what a spreadsheet might look like, where you have, again, each column listing those six different things used in this example for identifying where you're going to where you're going to notate each of these potential root causes that your team works through. And here at the top, you might identify the overall effect, the undesirable effect, or what you might be calling the defect that each of these things are leading to. So then for each of the columns, brainstorm with your team all the possible causes for the effect you're exploring. This is no different than what you might do with the team when you're working on your fishbone diagram or the CNE diagram when you're trying to take one perspective at a time to see those potential root causes that could lead to the undesirable effect. The only difference is it's not using the visual of the fishbone diagram, but you're first going with the team asking them, all right, from a manpower perspective, what are those issues that could be related to people like turnover, poor training, or those people type of things? that could be leading to this overall undesirable effect of having too many billing errors. So you brainstorm with your team all those possible root causes and you notate them on here. And as they identify each potential cause, then before you write down what the actual cause is, then explore with them the five whys. So they might throw something out as a possible potential cause, but then rather than using that as your potential root cause to identify, take it a step further by asking, well, why is that happening? And continue to ask why for each of those. So as an example, if the effect that you're trying to solve is long hold times for customers who talk to an agent and someone suggests a potential cause is because agents are too busy, well then you might ask, well, why are they too busy? 
and they might give you some sort of answer. Then they again ask them why, and you continue to ask why, again, like the five whys approach, until you get to some reasonable root cause for that. And once you've reached that lowest level, the most reasonable level of the root cause, then you would write that in the column pertaining to the issue where that potential root cause falls, as far as which of these different columns it may fall into. So you might have multiple causes that may answer the same why question, so be sure to notate each of those separately in their respective column and you continue for each column until all potential root causes have been noted. And it's okay if you have the same root cause that's noted in more than one column or if it doesn't perfectly match that column's title, that's okay. The point is that we want to identify all these potential root causes. It doesn't have to perfectly match up with the column that's represented here. So as an example, if we say that the effect here is too many billing errors that we're experiencing, we might ask the team, well, from a manpower perspective, what are those things that could be leading to too many billing errors? Well, they might say, well, employees are entering the wrong rates into the system. All right, well, why are they entering the wrong rates? Well, it might be because of new employees are more prone to make mistakes. Okay, well, we might ask, well, why are new employees prone to make mistakes? But it might be obvious because maybe they just haven't been experienced enough and they're not familiar enough with the system. So this might be the most reasonable level of depth that we want to go, that it's more new employees. So we might want to use this as our, our primary potential root cause that we want to explore later on. Another, er another issue they might elevate is the billing system is slow to update rates. Well, why is the billing system slow to update rates? Well, they might answer commercial sales reps are slow at entering their contract changes. Well, why are they slow at entering their contract changes? Well, those reps aren't incented to enter contract rates quickly. Well, if that's true, then that might be why we're experiencing this, because they don't have the proper incentive where they're not motivated or held accountable for, for not entering these quickly, and they may not understand the effects it's having in causing these billing errors. And you might explore it again, all right, from a machine perspective. All the things related to equipment, hardware, software, like actual fax machines, scanners, or other kinds of equipment, what are those things that could be leading to too many billing errors? They might suggest, well, the billing system is slow to update rates. Well, if you notice, this is the same initial root cause that was identified over here, too, except this one we found is more of a manpower type of issue because of the people. But in this example, they might say the billing system is slow to update rates. We might ask why, and they might say, well, it's not only because of the commercial sales reps, but another potential reason is the new rates are effective before they're actually being loaded into the billing system. Well, why are they effective before they're loaded into the system? Well, the new rates just don't have enough lead time. All right, well, then that might be something we need to explore as a potential root cause, what that lead time is. And again, that might be something similar to the machine type of opportunity. Or we might find it falls into some other group. And again, it doesn't matter which one it falls into. The primary purpose here is to identify all these potential root causes. And again, as we use the same approach as we might use with the f as the fishbone diagram or the CNE diagram by exploring it from each of these different methods, rather than taking the first thing, we want to explore using that five walls. Why is this happening? And continue to go deeper and deeper until we get to a reasonable level. The way this is illustrated here is you could just illustrate just that last potential root cause was identified, but sometimes it's helpful to see what the logic was that led up to it. So in this illustration, we're identifying in here those things that led up to what was that, that most uh, reasonable level for a potential root cause. But again, you can follow any method that suits your need, but this is one suggestion of how you might combine both the CNE diagram elements and the five whys tool in one process. So you're streamlining the overall process and again getting to the overall goal of identifying all those potential root causes that you want to eventually embed as your measurements for your data collection plan. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. I'd like you to try combining the CNE diagram of five wise concept like we showed in this previous example. So start off by taking a new spreadsheet and notate the effect as something like having fuel expense that is too high, or you can change it to something else that might be more relevant to you, like grocery expense is too high, or entertainment expense, or phone expense, or something like that. Something that illustrates some symptom that you might be feeling. And then next, try to notate each of the sources of variation as a column heading in the spreadsheet. You could use the same six M's that were used in the examples here, or if you have different variations of what you want to use, you're welcome to use that as well. And then try answering, why is my expense too high? And then for each of those potential causes that you can think of, then ask yourself even more why questions until you get to some reasonable depth of figuring out what the potential root cause is. And then notate that as a 
possible root cause within that respective source of variation that you identified this. And then try to repeat that process until you've explored all the possible causes all related again to that overall undesirable effect. Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.